Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire and I'm glad you're here. Today I'm excited because I have a crafting episode for you. One of my longer episodes that's like a class because I jam pack it full of tips and techniques and many, many card ideas. Now, the, this was the most fun I've had making a video in a long time because I do stitching, but then I turn them into lots of different card ideas. I know stitching isn't for everyone, so I'll put down in the YouTube description where you can skip ahead to the parts where I turn the stitched pieces into cards because I have a lot of ideas for you there. But if you've never stitched on paper, it's very therapeutic and I encourage you to give it a try. There are some new products out that make it easy and I'm gonna answer a lot of questions that I've been getting. So grab a cup of coffee or tea or grab a glass of wine and join me. This video really kickstarted my creativity and I'm hoping it does the same for you. Okay, let's get started by talking about stitching first. I get a lot of questions about the different types of floss or thread that you can use for stitching on paper. Now, I am not a professional embroiderer, cross stitch or anything like that. I'm just showing you what works well for using on paper and for cards. Now, the one that I will be using in this video is the DMC six ply floss. That's the one in my hand here. And you can see that it separates into six thin strands. The nice thing about this is you can use as many strands as you want, depending on the die and how big the holes are. And I will talk about that more as we go. Now you may notice that some of my floss is on bobbins like this, and that's what you'll see mostly through this video. That is because I like to store the floss on bobbins because it keeps it nice and organized and keeps it from getting tangled. You don't need to do this, but I find it helpful to stay organized. And I will link to a source for this below. So this DMC floss, the six ply version, is the one that you'll find at most craft stores and is most common, I believe, and comes in the most colors. Now there are two others that I use for stitching on cards, although I do not use them in today's video. The first is the DMC size five pearl cotton floss. So you can see here what it looks like up close. You don't peel these apart, it's just like one piece of floss and you use it as is. Then there's a size three pearl cotton, which is thicker. So you can see a com uh, comparison here on the left is size five, which is thinner, size three is on the right, and that's thicker. So those are the three types of thread or floss that I like to use when stitching. Now let me go over when I use the different ones. So over on the left here, I have the six ply floss. That's the one that you can peel apart and make as thick as you want. That is what I'm going to be using in today's video. Whenever I have stitching dies that have like a pattern, like maybe flowers or hearts or snowflakes or mandalas like we're doing today, this is the floss that I reach for because I can change how thick I stitch with. And you'll see that demonstrated. Whenever I use Spellbinder stitching dies, this is the floss I use. Now, if I'm going to do like a cross stitch background where I have a die that cuts a bunch of holes that cover a background and I wanna do a pattern, then I reach for the size five floss, the one here in the middle. This just stitches really well for that. You don't have to deal with all the different plies and it seems to work well with most of those stitch backgrounds. Here's a collection of some backgrounds that I've made. I'm not doing any of those today, but I will link up in the top right if you're interested in learning how to do those. Today I'm sticking with some fun and simple patterns that don't take as long to stitch. Now there are some background dies that create a bunch of holes, but the holes are bigger or the holes are spaced more apart. Here are two examples. I think the square one is a paper smooches that's even discontinued. But if the holes are bigger or the spacing's bigger, I use the size three pearl floss because that is a thicker floss. I also use this size three pearl floss when I'm stitching on felt, like this flower that I made here many, many years ago. So those are the three different types. If you're looking for a type of floss that works in most cases, I would say use that six ply that's over on the left, which is what I'll be using today. I just like using the other options in some cases because you don't have to deal with all the different plies and you can just use it as one like string or one thread. So that's a little rundown of the different types. If you're interested in learning about stitching on felt, I will link to a video up here on the top right as I'm only sticking to paper today. One more thing about the floss that you use, there are so many out there in so many colors and it's kind of hard to buy online. 
I will link below to some Etsy sellers that have put together beautiful color collections. So if you want to try some and take some of the mystery out of what colors are good, I highly recommend those. I really like to buy my floss that way, but you can buy individual on some sites. Now, as far as needles, it really doesn't matter what you use as long as the eye or the little opening at the top is big enough to put your floss through. I tend to reach for longer needles. I just find them easier to work with, but that's a personal preference. I will link to a bunch of options below. I know that there are great multi-needle packs that you can try and just use the one that seems to work most comfortably for you. But again, I'll have lots of that linked for you below. The last thing we have to get ready is a cardstock and dies that will create the holes to do our stitch patterns. Today's video, I'm focusing on fun shapes and my favorite dies for doing stitching of fun shapes is definitely Spellbinders. They have a bunch out there and I've shown them in videos before and I'll link to those up here on the top right, all the other videos I've done. Today, I'm focusing on three. The first of them is this diamond stitch border. What's cool is you've got this die that cuts the holes in a diamond pattern. Then there are two additional dies that you can use to cut along those. And I wanted to show you different ways to use this die. I'm gonna cut these now, then I'll teach you how to stitch and then you'll see the completed cards later. So in this case, I used a pencil and a ruler just to draw some lines to make sure I put this border down straight. In this example, it's a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of white cardstock, and I'm doing three diamond borders across it. The cardstock that I like to use is anything heavyweight. You can use color cardstock, white cardstock, anything. I do recommend heavyweight. If you do not have a heavyweight cardstock, you might want to double up, and you can do that if you have really intricate dies. In this case, I just used 110 pound white, and that worked great. But remember, you can also stitch on colorful cardstocks and get great results. Now this border, again, has those extra dies. In this case, I'm using the stitching diamond die in one of the borders that will just cut along one edge. That way I can create a panel where one edge has the stitching. I like when the dies have the solid cutting outline separate so you can use them together or separately. Now in this case, I'm using the two outlines right outside the stitching die, so I'll end up with a border that I can put anywhere on a card. I have lots of examples of using these with stitch patterns and different styles of cards in this video. Some are holiday, some aren't, so stay tuned for those a little bit later. Another fun stitching die that I'll be using today that's pretty quick to use and can be used in many ways is the Sparkling Mandala Stitch Die. Now you can make this look like a snowflake or just a mandala so you can use it all year round. Now it comes with the stitching die and then also the solid die that cuts around that and you can use those together or separately. If you leave out the solid die that cuts around it, you can just do stitching holes right into a card panel so you can stitch right onto that. And I'll demonstrate both things today. Now the third and final stitching die I'm using today is the new Spellbinder Stitch Miss Tree die. This is a very simple one to stitch also, and it creates a beautiful, elegant tree. Now there are stitching dies that have come out in the past from Spellbinders that I've used, and again, I'll link those up in the top right. Now after I've done my stitching, I like to use my tool in one from Spellbinders to rub across the back of it while laying it onto a cloth. That helps to pop out a lot of those little circles so that you're ready to stitch. But honestly, I've been known to leave the little holes in and I just pop them out as I stitch and I kind of leave a little trail of white dots behind me. Okay, so let's start by showing you some examples of how I go about stitching. I get a lot of questions about how to start and stop and how much thread to use and so on. So I thought I'd go through this and then we'll make the cards. For today's video, I mostly use two plies or strands of the six ply floss that I showed you at the beginning of this video. I start by cutting a really long piece of the floss. I then take out one strand or one ply and I hold it and I pull it away from the others just by pinching it like this. So now I have one thin strand that's really long. I take the other five strands and I wrap it around my little bobbin to save it for later. This is definitely my favorite way to do this and it keeps it from having the needle fall off as you stitch. You take the one strand and feed it through the eye of the needle and then pull it until the two ends meet. 
So basically you're stitching with two strands or two plies, but really you only have one. So see how the two ends meet there? And then on the other end, it's looped around your needle. So your needle won't fall off. This is a huge time saver for me, especially because I stitch on the go and I don't wanna lose my needle. So my favorite way to start the stitching is to pull it and you can see the two ends there and just put a little piece of tape on that. I'm gonna show you different ways to do this, but I think the easiest is just to put a little bit of uh, tape on those two little ends there. I use Easy C tape because it's very thin. You can remove it if you want to, but whatever you've got will work. And our needle is stuck on that thread now because it's through a loop, which I think is really handy. So now we can start stitching. I'm just going up and down holes to create like the starburst pattern from the center of these circles. So you can see I'm coming up from the side and then down through the center. And I'll continue to do this until that entire circle is filled. This is a very simple way to stitch because these dies make little indentations showing where your stitches go. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but they're there and it shows you like which holes to connect. That's one of the things I like about these Spellbinders dies. So I'm going from the outside to the inside. Then I go to the next outside hole to the inside. And I continue to do this until our entire circle is complete. And then I can move on to the next circle, starting from an outside dot and then going down through the hole in the center and continuing that. I find stitching on paper or sewing on paper, whatever you wanna call this, very easy to do because the paper is thick and it stays in place. It's not flopping around like when you cross stitch on fabric. It is really easy to do. So at this point, my thread is getting a little bit short because I've done a lot of stitching. So I'll go to the back side. So this is the back of the stitching and I'll take the needle and feed it through a bunch of the stitches I've already done. Doesn't matter where. Then I'll pull it tight and trim off the excess. That's the best way I've found to end my stitching. Then I will take another one of the ply that we had left over from before and I'll feed it through my needle and fold it over just like we did before. So now this time, instead of starting with taped end, this is another thing you can do. I'm taking my needle and feeding it through some of the stitches we've already done in the back until the ends kind of are close to the tucked in area. I then hold it with my finger and I start my stitching. So in this case, those two little ends are tucked into stitching in the back. You can either do that or the tape like I did before. I try not to do any knots in the back of my stitching because it just adds bulk behind it. And I find these two methods to be really good options. Okay, so I did this whole row here. I'm gonna finish off my thread and just trim it off. And now we have our first row of stitches done. And then I continue to do the others in the tree. This gets to be pretty quick to do after you've done it a few times and you can easily take the stitching on the go. I am known to do this at baseball games and when traveling. I even am at the lake for a few weeks this summer and I stitch on the boat. I do this everywhere and I've even done it on the treadmill. Okay, so next I wanted to show you how to do this if you want maybe three ply or three strands of the floss. And I use three strands for the dark circle around the circle stitching we just did. So you can see the lighter green at the center, the darker green around the outside. I just made that a little bit thicker just to be able to demonstrate with for you. Some people like thicker stitching and that's totally fine. For this, I'm cutting a piece of six ply floss like I showed you at the beginning and I'm pulling out one strand at a time. I always do one strand at a time. So I pulled out one, now I'm pulling out two and then I pull out three. And so I have three different strands here and I'm putting them back together. Then I feed it through my needle and unlike last time, I don't make the ends meet. I have one really long end and then one that's a bit shorter. And then I stitch this way. So in this case, you'll have a tail hanging off of your needle all the time and you can adjust that tail's length as you stitch. The needle doesn't stay stuck on like with the two ply option I just showed you, but this gives you three. So in this case, I'm starting by tucking my end in through the back stitching and then starting my stitching on the front. And I'm using my finger to hold it there until I get going so it doesn't come undone. Now this is again three strands thick and you'll see a tail kind of come out with my needle each time and I just am careful that my needle doesn't slip off. 
Now this is a type of back stitch that I'm doing around this circle here. I will link to a clearer video on back stitch and the other types of stitches you can do up here on the top right if you want to check that out. But the way I prefer to do back stitch on paper is I go up one hole, then I go back one hole, as you see me do here. Then I go up the next hole, and then I go back a hole again. This is a little bit different way than most people do, but I feel it gives the best results. So up the next hole, and then back the last hole. And I continue to do this until I form a circle around there. Anytime I'm forming a circle or straight line, that's the method that I like to do. And again, you can check out the right video on the top right if you really want to see that a little bit closer in a simple view. So I'll just continue to do the back stitch around all of those circles. And when I run short on thread, all I have to do is tuck the needle through the back, trim off the excess thread, and start a new one. Now I get a lot of questions about metallic thread for stitching. I have tried many different types and a lot of them are a little difficult to work with. The ones that I like the best are the Altenew metallic thread set. It has silver, gold, and like a bronze color. The way I like to use this is cut a really long strand, then I feed it through my needle and pull it to the, until the two ends meet and I stitch this way. So it's really one long ply folded over and it gives me a two ply effect. This is exactly like I showed you for the first method with the green floss. So now I have this long thread here with the two ends meeting up. I start to stitch and I flip it over and I'm gonna pull it until the two little ends are sticking out there and I'll put some tape on the back and then we can start stitching. The gold is a little finicky or metallic threads are a little finicky to work with because they don't like to kind of stay together, but the shine is definitely worth it. So I usually only use it for accents on my cards and not for a complete card, but it is totally up to you. So in this case, I'm stitching the gold, like little starburst effect at the top of the tree. And it's very much like the green starburst effect I did at the bottom of the tree at the beginning of my stitching. I used the same gold thread to do the stitching at the bottom of the trees to make it look like a tree stand. So I just follow the impressions that the Spellbinders dies create. These Spellbinder stitching dies make little impressions that show you which holes to connect. And this base ends up being like really tall X's and then I outline it. Super easy to follow. By the way, when I'm stitching on paper, I pull pretty tight. I find that by pulling a bit tight, instead of having loose stitches, you get more definition to your pattern and it really makes it look beautiful in the end. Now I don't show all of my stitches in this video to save time. However, I have very close up photos over on my blog. You can go over there and bookmark them if you want to. You can save cards and videos on my blog for future reference. And that way you can go back and kind of follow whatever colors or patterns I do if that's helpful. But again, these dies make it super easy. Okay, so now that we've done some stitching with the tree, let's move on to the mandala and do some stitching with that. This one's fun because you can just make it look like a pattern or you can make it look like a snowflake. So this time I thought I'd use three ply of floss. Actually, in most of my examples today I do two, but here I'm doing three again. So I'm going right up the middle here and I'm holding the ends on the back there instead of using tape. And I'll just hold those ends there as I start stitching. You can make sure that your stitching actually goes over those ends on the back so that they stay put. But usually if you just hold it there and keep stitching all the way around, it will be just fine. The stitching on this is very similar to the tree I showed you earlier, where you have a circle of dots and then one in the center. So you just go up through an outside dot and then down through the center. And you keep going all the way around until you have that little starburst effect in the center. Again, this die makes it really easy to follow. You'll see I did some pink stitching and the circles around that. And now I'm doing blue for the outside of the mandala pattern. For this, I'm tucking through the stitching I've already done to hold my end there. And I go up at the top of that pink circle and then all the way to the outside edge. Now this is again, easy to follow because there are engraved lines or embossed lines in that that show you where the stitches go. So it's really easy and a fun way to do some mindless therapeutic stitching and create something really special. This mandala die is especially fun because you can change up the colors and the way you stitch it and you'll see lots of examples a little bit later in this video. 
But finally, I did want to show you some stitching using the diamond border die. Believe it or not, you can get a lot of very different looks with this die. So here's some basic stitching. I have one strand of the gold metallic thread and I put it through a needle and have the two ends meeting together right there at the end and taped to the back. Now for this, I do the same thing that I did with the circle that I showed you earlier. This time it's just a diamond. So I start on the outside hole here, I go up and then I go down through the inside hole. And I continue to do this to go around the whole diamond. Now in this particular case, I'm not stitching the entire diamond in gold thread. Instead, I'm only doing parts of it so that I can do multiple colors around the diamond. That's a fun way to change up the look and a way to kind of step up your stitching after you get the hang of just doing basic color stitching. Again, the metallic thread is a little trickier, so stick with the color thread first. So you can continue to stitch around all these diamonds until it's all filled. Now the fun thing about the diamond stitching die is that you can change up the stitching and do different than what the die was intended. In this case, I have a diamond pattern, but look at the stitching is like a cross hatch in the center. So let me show you how I did this too. It's just another way you can stitch. I have two ply of a colored thread and I'm starting by tucking through the back through some stitching I've already done and holding the end. Now this time I'm starting at an outside hole and then going across it. So I'm completely ignoring the hole in the center. I'll cover it up so no one won't, will see it. And I just go from one side to the hole directly across from it. And I'll keep doing this back and forth until I have a bunch of horizontal stitches across this diamond. I think it's fun that this has a very different pattern to it than the stitching I just showed you. Once I've drawn across the whole diamond, now we're going to do the same thing but vertical. So I'm starting over on the top side of the diamond, going to the bottom, going up from the bottom up to the top, and I'll just keep creating stitches going vertically on this. So instead of going from the outside to the center, I'm just going up and down. After I've completed all of that, I will take my stitching and do like a back stitch to outline it, but you definitely can skip that outline if you prefer. Doing a little bit of the back stitching here where I go up one hole and back the last one, then up the next hole and back the last one. So you can really change this up and do as much stitching as you want or as little as you want. It's totally up to you. Okay, so now that I've reviewed some of the stitching that you can do with these different dies, let's turn these into cards and show a huge variety of examples. This is definitely my favorite part. So let's start with this tree that I showed you that I did stitching with before. I'm putting some double-sided tape along the back of the stitching and around the outside edges. I wanna be pretty generous here because I want this to lay flat against the mat I'm putting it on. This is Lawn Fawn double-sided tape, which is definitely my favorite. So after I have a lot of double-sided tape on the back, I probably used more than I needed here, I removed all of the release paper, and then I'm putting that onto a dark green panel, and what happens is that dark green cardstock will show through the hole openings. So think about what color cardstock you want behind your stitching, because it will probably show through the openings a bit. I use a bone folder to really press that in place, and now you can see the green showing through the openings. If you don't want green showing through, you could definitely do white. Now I used the same Christmas tree stitching die to cut from gold mirror cardstock. Now you see kind of what looks like the garland going across the trees. I'm taking those gold pieces out and gluing them into the openings on my stitching. So this is just a bit of an inlay. So I have like this gold go garland going across the tree. You could definitely skip this if you wanted to. You could do stitching over that if you wanted to but I thought it'd be fun to have the gold kind of stringing across the tree. The green still shows through in the little leaves above and below that, but you have that gold to add some extra shine. Next, I really like to add pearls or gems to my stitching. I like the dimension it gives to it in the finishing touch. Here I have some red pearls that I'm adding to the center of my stitched green circles. You really can do anything you want here. The sky is the limit and you can add a lot or a little. It really just depends on if you want to keep it simple or really add bling. Now towards the little garland that I did the die cut inlay, I'm adding some gold baubles. These are from Trinity Stamps and I will link to these different options below. 
Now I wanted the sentiment to be really special since the stitching is. I'm using the Spellbinders mini Christmas sentiment strips, hot foil plates and dies. Look at all the different sentiments in here. They're all Christmas or holiday related. And I thought I would do foiling of a bunch of them at once. Now I love to do hot foiling with my glimmer machine. However, if you don't have a foiling machine, you could instead stamp and gold heat emboss a sentiment to put on the card if you prefer. So I have a bunch of the hot foil plates here and I'm putting tape along the back of them so I can hold them together and foil them all at once so I'll have spare sentiments left over for future cards in this video. Might as well do a bunch at the same time. This is the Spellbinders Glimmer Foil Machine. This is great for adding foil, very smooth, crisp foil to your projects. I am taking those hot foil plates and I'm laying them down onto the hot portion of the glimmer machine. I've allowed this to warm up and it's ready. I then take my glimmer foil and put it pretty side down. Then I put a piece of cardstock on top of that and then the plates that come with the machine. You then push the button which starts a timer and lets you know when it's ready to go. I'm going through this glimmer process very quickly here, this machine process. I have a video showing it in great detail that I'll link to the top right here if you want to check that out. I'm just showing it briefly here. Once the timer is up, I can take out that plate and all of the platforms there and I bring it to my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine and I run it through. So the glimmer machine adds the heat, the die cut machine adds the pressure and that gives you a beautiful perfect foil. And I just go back and forth a couple times through that die cut machine. By the way, the Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine is back in stock finally, and I have a link to that below. So check that out before it sells out again. Okay, so now I can remove the foil and the plates and look at that beautiful foil sentiment collection I have there. Now you'll notice they're all crooked and wonky, but that's okay. It would be tricky to cut out with the trimmer, but there is this long die included in that hot foil set that allows you to cut out each one individually and you just trim the sides down as you want. So it makes it really easy to create sentiment strips. By the way, if any of the foil gets kind of caught up between the little letters in the foiling, you just use a dry brush to rub it away and you'll get crisp results. For this particular card, I did foiling on red cardstock. Now on the back of that sentiment strip, I'm putting some adhesive and two additional red cardstock strips. The reason I'm doing that is it gives it some nice dimension, much stronger dimension than you would get using little pieces of foam tape behind that. It'll hold up much better in the mail. Gina K Connect liquid adhesive is great for this. So here is the completed card. I did put a red mat around our white stitch panel and I added that to a gold cardstock note card that I created. I like using gold mirror cardstock for a note card because the inside is white so you can write in there. Now on this you can see the gold bobbles and the red pearls I added, the green cardstock that shows through some of the opening, and the fun detailed stitching that we did. Here's another tree example. Now this one has a completely different feel to it, a little more playful. You can see I did the same type of stitching, but I did a dark pink on the bottom row, medium pink in the middle, and light pink at the top, and then a silver stitching at the top top of the tree and the base. Now this is a mini slimline card, so it's about three and a quarter by six and a quarter inches. Now for the background, I wanted something subtle, so I used the PhotoPlay number no. six dots die, which I've used many times. It's great for mini slimline cards. And I cut it from pink and glued it on pink, just for a little bit of interest. Then I added that to a white note card. Now the silver gems on here are different than what I normally use. These are from Honeybee, and they have a different cut to them, so they actually have more shine than usual. And I thought it would be great for this tree card. Those come in silver and in gold. Now I did put a little bow on the top of the tree. It's kind of hard to see there. I just did a little bow with some of the silver metallic thread from Altenu just to add a bit of interest to the top of the tree also. Okay, now I did do a bunch of other trees that I have yet to turn into cards. Here's one where I did stitching on holographic cardstock, one where I did it on white cardstock with some pool color threads, lots of different options here. I also really like the look of this on the gold metallic cardstock or even on the green cardstock. Remember, you could do stitching on two pieces and glue them back to back and turn them into an ornament too. Lots of things you can do with this. 
I just have done a bunch of stitching and now I can turn them into cards later on. Next, let's look at some of the cards that I created using the mandala die. There are so many ways you can use this. I did some for holiday and some for non-holiday. For the background on this particular card, I use the Spellbinder Scallops Embossing Folder. I like to do this with white cardstock when I have a lot of negative space showing because it just adds a little bit of texture and interest. I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine, which is definitely one that I recommend highly. And again, it's back in stock, but you could use this embossing folder with whatever machine you may have. Off screen, I did some colorful stitching on some bright blue cardstock, just like the stitching I showed you earlier. And I also die cut three additional white mandalas and I'm gluing those together. I will then glue these to the back of our blue stitch piece. The only reason I'm doing this is to get some dimension behind it so that that blue mandala will stand out against our background. Next, I have a bright pink four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card that I created. I'm gluing a white panel to the inside and then our emboss panel that we did with the scallop embossing folder to the front. I like to put that white panel in the inside just so that the heavy weight on the front of our card doesn't make the card kind of uh, weak feeling by putting that white cardstock panel on the inside it gives it strength and also gives it a nice finished look I added a making spirits bright foiled sentiment using the hot foil uh, plates that I showed you earlier and I'm adding some silver gemstones to our mandala just to give it a bit of sparkle I really think that makes it pop now look closely, especially at that pink circle right at the middle. I added some silver stitching to it, also around the green and blue circles. That silver stitching just adds a little more interest and a little more sparkle. Remember, you could take a screenshot here if you want to stitch something similar, or go to my blog where I have close-up photos of all of these cards. Here's another example, but this time I put my mandala more towards the center of the card. So I used a Spellbinder Sun Rays embossing folder on some purple cardstock and added that to a white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Now, if you look closely at this mandala die cut, I did some extra stitches in addition to what the die cut or the die dictated. So you can see some extra stitches between the circles. So you can get really creative with these and add more to them if you want to. And then I use some pink pearls to really pop the color and just add it to the pattern of the die cut. Now this example is one where I did stitching directly onto a panel. So I didn't use the surrounding die for this. I just die cut the dots from the center of a panel. I also used a hello you sentiment in the center so that I could use this anytime, not just during the holidays. For that hello you, I did a hot foiling like I showed you before using the Spellbinders Mini Sincere Sentiments Hot Foil Plate Set. And you can see it comes with dies that cut those down into sentiment strips. Really handy, but if you do not have a foil machine, you could always just stamp a sentiment onto a sentiment strip and heat emboss it for some shine. There are many different sentiments in this and you can check the product link below to see all the different messages. So I did bright pink foil with hello you on the little sentiment strip and added it over this colorful stitching. I also did some soft colored pearls just to bring a bit of dimension. And I matted our stitch piece with blue cardstock so that would show through the openings. I then added that to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. I'm really loving the look of the shiny foil with the stitching. There's something about it that I really like, so I thought I'd do another, this time with more foil on the background. For this, I'm using the Spellbinders Essential Glimmer Circles, which you see over there on the right. Later, I'll use the rectangles that you see on the left. These are great for putting little dots of foil on your background. I've used it before in videos. Again, these are hot foil plates that'll put down foil, not die cut. So I have the large circle hot foil plate and I'm taping it towards the top center of my blue background, exactly where I want it to be. I will then lift up that hot foil plate and slip some glimmer foil underneath it, pretty side facing up. I then can take this and put this upside down onto our glimmer foil machine, let it warm up and then run it through our die cut machine to do the foiling as I showed you earlier. And you can see the circle of foil dots we get. Now I want to put a sentiment underneath that. So I'm taping a hot foil sentiment right under it, using my T-roller to make sure it's straight. 
I will lift up that hot foil plate, slip a little scrap of foil underneath it, lay that into our glimmer machine, let it warm up, run it through our die cut machine, and then we have a foil sentiment on the background too. I then glued one of my stitched mandalas right in the center and even added some iridescent pearls to those. Those are Trinity Stamps bubble bath pearls. So you can use your glimmer machine to add foil to a background very easily and make sure it's centered by taping the hot foil plate in place and then sliding the foil under it. Again, I've got a video showing this in great detail. If you want to check it out, it's on the top right here. There's a closer look at the stitching I did here. I just did different colors of teal to go with our background and then the gemstones to add some sparkle. Here's another example that uses a lot of the same products but gives a different look. On the background panel, I used the Spellbinders hot foil plates in the glimmer rectangle. So it gives me dots of pink foiling in the background. And then I did the Christmas greetings at the center. Then I added a pink snowflake at the top center of that with lots of pink, purple, and silver stitching. You'd be surprised how fast these come together when you get the hang of the stitching. Okay, now this might be my favorite card I've ever made. I don't always love my cards when I make them, but this one I am thrilled with and I hope to make a bunch more. In this case, I did three mandalas and put them on a slimline card. I wanted a lot of detail to this, so I decided to die cut from white cardstock this background that is from the Spellbinders August Kit of the Month set. Now you can use any slimline die for this, but this one had three areas where I thought I would put my three stitched pieces. I glued that white die cut onto a light blue background and then onto a white slimline card. Now this is about eight and a half by three and a quarter, but it really doesn't matter what size as long as it fits in a slimline envelope. I'm putting glue on those three areas and then I'm adding to it three stitched mandalas that I made. All three of these are exactly the same. I did the same blue and silver stitching on each of them using the techniques I showed you earlier. So I'm gluing all of these down and then all I need to do is add a few little gems and pearls and then a sentiment across the front. There you can see the light blue background showing through that background die cut. You can also see some blue pearls I added to them. These are new from Cat Scrappiness. It's like a bright darker blue that is just gorgeous. It's the majestic blue pearls. And then I also added a few silver uh, gemstones also. That sentiment in the center is on bright blue cardstock and it's white heat embossed. And that is from a My Favorite Things stamp set. Now you could change this up to get many different looks. You could have bright colors. You could stitch on bright colored cardstock. You could do a rainbow effect. You can even do two stitched mandalas and offset them a bit to make it look more like a flower. So think about the different ways you can use them and stretch them and get different looks from your stitching dies. Yet another way you can use the mandala die or the tree die is to make an ornament. So here I have a stitch panel where I glued an extra die cut to the back of it. I have a loop of silver cording, any string or ribbon would work, and I'm taping the ends of that loop to the back of that stitch die cut. Now I have a solid mandala die cut there. See the one that doesn't have any holes in it? I'm gonna glue that right on top of it so that I have a solid back to my stitching and we can hang this on a tree. I can write a message on that solid die cut or stamp something there, or even do another stitched piece and add it back to back so both sides are stitched. It's completely up to you. You can then add this ornament onto the front of a card and give it to someone as a keepsake. I've done a video where I show how to add paper or stitched ornaments to the front of a card, and I'll link to that here on the top right. Another thing about this particular one is I did my stitching on holographic cardstock. I thought this would be hanging on a tree, so it'd be fun if it were shiny and would catch the lights on the tree. So don't be afraid to do your stitching on specialty cardstock too. Now I just had a couple more mandalas I wanted to show you. These, Lila actually did the stitching. So this is a bright blue cardstock one, kind of like the one I did before but she did some lighter colors of stitching on it and then can later add some pearls or gems. And here's one she did with some jewel tones on white cardstock. 
Okay, now let's look at some card examples using the diamond stitch border. This one, again, can be used in so many different ways for completely different looks. Now this first example is where I die cut just the stitching die three times along a white panel. I showed you at the beginning of the video. I did some basic stitches there without even doing the outline in some bright colors of floss and a little bit of silver. Now on top of this, I decided to add a black sentiment. So I die cut it from the memory box. Thank you Streamline Script die. This is a new one and I really like it. I'll be using it a lot. I die cut it three times from black cardstock and glued those three layers together. I put glue on the back of the stack die cuts, lay them right on top of her stitching. Then I put a piece of temporary tape over that. So it really pressed it down over all that stitching so I can be sure it will stay put. Once that's dry after a few minutes, I can remove that tape and I can be sure the black die cuts will stick to the stitching. So the fun thing is these stitch backgrounds can be a backdrop to anything you want to add on top. I thought I would add along with the sentiment some small flowers and I'm using the Spellbinders Petite Floral Potpourri dies. This is a great set with different size flowers you can layer in different little leaf clusters. So I die cut those from some scraps that match the floss that I used and I glued those right around the thank you. Now my panel, I did glue onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch pool color note card, and I have a pink envelope to match. I feel like this is a really special card to give to someone with lots of detail to look at, and it definitely is fun to make. Now here is one of my other diamond backgrounds. This is the one that I demonstrated earlier with the crisscross stitching. On this, I decided to keep it very simple and just add a bold thanks die cut. This is the Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Thanks Die. I cut the word thanks from holographic cardstock and the shadow die from white cardstock, and I'm gluing that right on top of our stitching. I thought the holographic cardstock added some interest, but wasn't distracting from all of the stitching behind it. I then added a blue foiled sentiment strip underneath using the mini sentiment strips I showed you earlier. And I also added some Trinity Stamps Bubble Bath Gems in between each of the diamonds for a bit of interest. That panel is glued onto a blue note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I added a white panel on the inside to write my personal message. This next card is another favorite of mine and I went ahead and die cut a bunch of background panels like this so I could make more very easily. In this case, I did the stitching inside of the diamonds and also did an outline on each of them. You can see I used a light color and dark color in each of the diamonds along with a little bit of silver stitching. Now check out that sentiment on the front. I'm crazy about this. It has thank you, which was stamped and die cut and dear friend that was stamped and die cut. That's from one of my all time favorite stamp sets from the greetery called Opposites Attract. Now, for a long time, they've had dies to cut out the big words on the top, but now they also have dies available to cut out the script words on the bottom, and you can layer them together. So I stamped and die cut the bold thank you. Now I need to stamp and die cut the script dear friend message. So I have a piece of white cardstock here where I stamped dear friend, but I need this die to cut around it. So I'm taking a negative space of that same die cut and lining it up right over our stamp sentiment, getting it positioned right around it. I will then take the die and pop it into that negative space opening. And that way I'll be sure it'll cut right along that sentiment. I'll now tape this all in place and run it through our die cut machine. The die cut or the die will actually cut our stamp sentiment perfectly. And now we can add this on top of the thank you. So here's the card that I ended up with. I cut my stitch panel down and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding pink note card. I added the bold thank you right on top of our stitching and then the dear friend die cut on top of that. You can get a closer look at those little holographic hearts here that I added to the center of the diamonds. Those little hearts are from a discontinued heart die set I had, but there are many dies that have tiny little hearts included in the set that would be perfect for this. You could also use gemstones there if you wanted. I also wanted to show you that using a stitch background works even with playful cards like this little gnome card where his legs actually wiggle back and forth. 
Now for this gnome, I used the Spellbinders Dancing Gnome Dies. It has all of these little pieces that you can use together to create different looking gnomes. They also have a die set that's similar. That's a little girl holding a bunch of gift packages. Well, I die cut these from some scraps of cardstock and arranged them together to create a gnome. Now it's very easy to do. I just followed the guide on their website. You can make it so their arms move, but I'm just gonna glue his arms right on the back of him. Now notice at the bottom of the screen, you see his legs and there's a big round circle at the top of that. That's so his legs can wiggle back and forth. So I'm gonna hold the legs behind him, just hold it there, flip it over, and put a circle foam dot right at the center. Now this could be a foam square if that's what you have, or a small little button. I'm also putting some foam squares up towards the top of his body, but no adhesive will go on the legs. Now when I glue this onto our card, I'll just make sure that the legs are hanging from that foam square. So I glued that right on top of our little stitch panel there onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And you can see how those legs just swing back and forth. It just makes for a fun and playful card, something unexpected. I also like that the stitching adds a little bit of detail too. Now for this sentiment, I used the Lawn Fawn Own Gnome stamp set. I thought that worked well with the die cuts. And then on the background of my note card, I used the Spellbinder Stargazer embossing folder, just for some st subtle star texture. Now my last card for today is another of my favorites because it shows that you can use your stitching pieces as a backdrop for just about anything. And I really like this bear die cut. So I die cut from white cardstock all of the pieces from the new Spellbinders Chill Bear die set. And then I glued them all together. I added a bit of color with markers, but other than that, I just used white cardstock. There are also snowflake dies in the set and I use those snowflakes just to add some interest to the background too. So you can see the stitching on this is just that border glued right along the card. And I did it with soft colors of thread and a little bit of silver. So think about it, you could change up this card to work for the whole year. So maybe for a spring card, you use a large flower instead of a bear. For a fall card, you could use a large leaf instead of the bear. So you can really change up the design, but have stitching as that little backdrop piece. For the sentiment, I use the Spellbinders Mini Christmas Greeting Stamp Set. This is very similar to the Hot Foil Plate Set I showed you earlier, but if you'd rather stamp the greetings, you can using this set. So there you have it, a really long crafting video for you, just showing you how much fun stitching can be on your cards and also a bunch of card ideas. Now, if you are interested in anything I show in this video, I have links below in my YouTube description. Also, if you go to my blog, which is linked below, I have close-ups of all of these cards so you can get those close detail looks. Also, if you want to learn more about stitching, I have a playlist at the end here where you can see a lot of those different techniques and ideas. I thank you so much for sticking with me for this longer video. I hope you learned a thing or two and we'll see you again soon.